So I need to make a circle in that piece of plywood, and I'm going to use my router to do so. But how can I make a perfect circle without a jig? I'm going to use a Lexan sheet that is a quarter inch thick to make that circle jig. The jig needs to be the same width as the clear Lexan base on my router. And the best way to mark plexiglass is using an utility knife because it's precise and anyway, my pencil doesn't work on plastic. I then use a ruler to make a line between those two marks. And once it's done, I'm ready to cut that Lexan sheet. I use my bandsaw for this task with a guide set at 4 inches from the blade. And now that my Lexan piece is cut, it is the same width as my original router base. I still need to make some holes in the new Lexan piece so I can screw it to my router. But before I can do so, I need to take off the original router base. I'm using some two-way tape to stick the base on my Lexan sheet. It will act as a guide to give me the exact location of each holes I need to drill. The holes on the base is larger than the screw itself, so it's hard to find the center of these hole. To find the center, I'm using a quarter inch pilot point drill bit from the wall that is the same width as the hole on the base, in this case it's one quarter. Pilot point is like having a smaller drill bit at the end of the drill bit itself, so it will find the exact center on my Lexan sheet. I don't drill to the Lexan sheet for now. I just want to leave a mark with the tip of the drill bit. And I do this four times, one for each hole. I then remove the base from my Lexan sheet and I'm ready to make the holes for the screw. But I want to make sure that the head of the screw is flush with the Lexan sheet, otherwise it will scratch the material when using the jig. So again, I'm drilling using a pilot point drill bit, but this time, the upper stage of the drill bit is the same width as the screw head, so the head can be recessed in the Lexan sheet and the smaller pilot point will make the hole for the threaded part of the screw. I drill until I reach the desired depth, just enough so that the screw is flush. This will make what we call a counterbore hole. It's similar to a countersink, but it's not the same thing. Counterbore holes are wider and more square. And I repeat this four times. All right, so as you can see, all my screws sit flush into that counterbore hole, so I can finally screw it to my router. But before I do so, I'm installing a quarter inch spiral router bit so I can get through my Lexan sheet. I will also take the time to scribe those sharp corners using an utility knife and I'm going to cut them later with my bandsaw. But for now, I drilled through that Lexan sheet using my router bit. I need to scribe a line in the middle of that Lixen sheet. It's necessary for the next step because we'll need to drill all the hole that will act as the pivot point. And we're going to make all these all on that line. First hole is 2.5 inches apart from the router bit, so it will cut a 5 inches circle. The diameter of a circle is always 2 times the radius. So I drill a hole at every half inches, so I can cut circles at every 1 inches increments, for a maximum of 18 inches. I make a mark with my utility knife at every half inches, then I unscrew the Lexan sheet from my router. And using my drill press, I drill 14 holes for the pivot point. They are all 1 8 of an inch. And I can still come back later and make a hole at a custom distance for a specific circle dimension. And I also cut those sharp corners using my bandsaw. Alright, we're almost done. The one cutter hole is too small for sawdust and material to get out when cutting, so I want to enlarge that hole. But before, I want to show you the mistake I made here. I've tried to use a V-Groove router bit to go through that Lexan sheet, but it just melted my plastic. And as you can see, it made a bubble. So I recommend using a hole saw to enlarge that hole, because the pilot point of a hole saw is one quarter of an inch. It's the same as the router bit hole I made in the Lexan sheet. 
I didn't know what to use to remove that bubble, so I've tried to use a step bit and it worked. So I've drilled until I reach a 1 inches hole. And we are done. So with a hole at every half inches, I can make a circle from 5 inches up to 18 inches. And one of the reason I drilled the 14 pivot holes using a 1.8 drill bit is that I will be able to use Dremel 1.8 bit with a stone so it gives me some grip to insert or to remove the Dremel bit from the hole. Alright, so let's cut a circle. For my project, I need a 12 inches circle, so I start by drilling a pilot hole and I insert the Dremel bit at 6 inches from the router bit. I'm super happy with the result, my circle jig is working perfectly, it is easy and cheap to make, 5 bucks or less and you've got a super nice circle jig. So don't forget to subscribe and I see you next time, bye bye.